It's August and so I know a lot of you are going to be starting your PhD programs soon. And so here I am with five tips to survive your first year as a PhD student. So the first thing I want you to remember as you're starting a PhD is to realize that everybody, the older PhD students, the professors, even the people that have won Nobel laureates, okay, they were once like you. They all started at zero. They all started at some point. And so it's okay, you were in the right place. Obviously, if you were if you were not good enough, you wouldn't have gotten into the program. So congratulations on getting into the program. You are in the right place. Now, the first year is when a lot of people choose their advisors. At least that was how it was for me as a biomedical PhD. We went through three rotations, sometimes a fourth, and then through that those rotations, you'd pick an advisor for your program. Um, and if that advisor liked you too, then you would stay in that lab and continue with your PhD until the end, right? I know that that's not the case for all programs, but I do know that in a lot of PhD programs you choose your who your advisor is going to be now in choosing who your advisor is going to be it's important for you to think about a few questions so if you're somebody who wants to have a very productive PhD and by that I mean be able to publish papers right because in academia a lot of advancement happens because of how many papers you've published so if you intend on staying in academia and even if you don't plan on staying in academia, but at least you want to have a productive PhD, it is important for you to think about the publication record of your advisor. So if your advisor is somebody that publishes regularly, then it's very possible that you will finish that PhD with at least one publication, right? Which is great. When I was starting my PhD program, I actually start, I chose an advisor who was a younger advisor. She was very early on in her career. And because of that, it was really important to her to publish very regularly. And by the time I was done in her lab, I had about four papers, two of them where I was the first author, okay? And so I had a very, very productive PhD as a result. So you really wanna think about that if this is something that is important to you. Another way to gauge that is to look at how you know, how long it's been since that advisor has published. When was their last publication? It was five, six, seven years ago. This may be somebody who is at a point in their career where they, they may not care about publications as much. And for those types of advisors, I'm not saying they're not good advisors, right? And I'm not saying that having publications is the end or be all of your PhD, but it is important. So if you see that, then I would say, you know, you know, like take it under advisement because it is going to affect um, your publication record. Now, another thing you want to also chat with your advisor about as you're starting your PhD is if they, you know, if there's certain things that are important to you, for instance, family, right? If you plan on starting a family, if you already have a family, how important are these things to your advisor? Um, also, things like maybe you would like to get teaching experience. Maybe there are certain experiences you'd like to have. Is your advisor okay with you taking time off to be part of certain career experience programs? Some PI, some advisors do not look kindly on that at all. Some are very open and very, very flexible. So these are all things you want to gauge because ultimately this is your career, okay? This is your life and your career. And as much as your advisor is going to be your boss for a few years, you also want to start taking charge of things from the very beginning and make sure that you are in the right spot so that your future goals are supported by what you're doing right now. And speaking of careers, the first year isn't too early for you to start thinking about your career path after your PhD. Even though most PhDs are four, five, six, seven years, right? The time does move quickly. And so the first year really, even though you're still quite removed, you still have some time, I really do believe that this is also a good time for you to talk with your Dean of Students or the Dean of Graduate Student Affairs or graduate, the Graduate Student Affairs uh, Department about 
what career support programs there are within the PhD program. I didn't see that during my PhD. We had a lot of seminars on research topics. Uh, we definitely had a few career-like days, but to be honest, in hindsight, I really never was exposed to anything that helped me begin to think about my career beyond my PhD. Um, and I didn't do my PhD long ago. I, f I only finished in 2015, right? And so now I'm beginning now in 2021, I am beginning to see that some PhD programs and some graduate student affairs departments are incorporating seminars and programs on career development and personal development and thinking about your career after school. But if this is something that is not um, present at the school you are at, empower, empower yourself and speak to the dean, speak to the Graduate Students Affairs program. A lot of them are really open and may not even know that the students want this. And so if you talk to them, and if I knew I would have talked to the people in my program, right, talk to them about, okay, so how are you gonna support us PhD students in our future careers? I didn't know that there were careers outside of academia when I was starting my PhD program. And I really, really do think it's important that PhD students, especially right now, know that there are options outside of academia because very few, I think it's about 10 to 20 percent of current PhD students will ever land a full-time tenured faculty position. Okay and so realizing that the odds of getting a tenured faculty position are quite low, it is important that these programs empower students to see programs outside, to see career opportunities outside of academia and give them, help them obtain those tools to be able to succeed in that sense. So as a first year student, this is something that you can bring up within your departments. As a PhD student, you probably know this already, you'll be reading a lot and you'll be writing a lot. And so this is also an excellent time for you to start finding a system that works for you to file away things that you read and to keep the most important parts of those things so that when you're writing, you can use them. It could be something super simple like having a notebook. I had a composition notebook and whenever I would read papers, I would summarize what I had read to the best of my understanding in this notebook. I would also print out um, actual, you know, hard copies of the articles and kept them by my desk so that when the time came for me to write my papers, I would just pull the composition notebook, I'd pull the publications that I knew that the, this research was in, and then it would support me as I wrote. So it's a really good time for you to develop a system that works for you. For me, the composition notebook worked really well. Maybe you're more tech savvy and you would like to use things like Google Docs or perhaps Evernote or Notion, some note-taking app that has a filing system that allows you to store these snippets of knowledge that you can later go back to, later refer to, and it becomes really, really handy all throughout your career, to be honest, because not just will this be helpful to you when you're writing papers, it will also be helpful when you're preparing presentations, ultimately when you're writing your dissertation. So having all these resources kind of filed away and organized in some shape or fashion that supports you is going to be important as well. Now, I did do a video on three books that I think every PhD student should read before they get started with their PhD program. In hindsight, I look at those books and I'm like, man, if I if I knew about these books, okay, if I read these books before I started my PhD program, I feel in so many ways I would have been more productive, I would have been more resilient. Certain things wouldn't have phased me as much as they phased me <laughs> when I was doing my PhD. So you wanna check out that video that I did, three books that you should read. They're gonna be super helpful to you as you're getting started with your PhD. And then don't forget to take care of yourself. Have some way to take care of yourself. It could be exercise for 30 minutes every day. It could be reading some kind of novel to wind down the day. It could be playing with your children if you have children. It could be spending time with your spouse if you have a spouse. So really think about how you are going to also take care of yourself, yourself outside 
of being a PhD student because beyond being a PhD student, your other things as well, don't neglect those. Those make you a whole person. And trust me, those will make you far more successful than just focusing narrowly on the PhD. Let me know in the comments below which one of these tips resonated with you the most. Let me know in the comments below.